What's going on guys? So I'm getting a whole bunch of questions about why I'm in Philippines. I'm an American. Uh, how come I'm filming all these episodes in Asia? So today I wanted to tell you guys the story of how I ended up here in the Philippines. So let's do that. Years ago, I was in university and I started traveling and then I took a break from university in 2010 and just never went back. I started traveling. This is a whole longer story, but eventually I became a professional travel writer. It, it took a while uh, to actually make money travel writing, but once I started making money, um, I traveled all over the world for the next 10 years. And my niche was scuba diving. You know, I was traveling to all these destinations. I went to 89 countries in this 10 years. Um, and was writing about scuba diving destinations for the most part. Uh, a lot of other non-diving, but anyway. Uh, so, as I became a professional rider, I was getting sponsors and stuff. And like I said, I was going all over the world just constantly. I never went back home to Colorado since 2010. I was just next place, next place, next place for all these years and I was averaging 170 to 180 flights per year. Um, so that brings me to, I started getting, I got a sponsor from Star Alliance and Marriott and some other companies for this one big travel campaign. And I'd done a, a lot already like this, but they basically Star Alliance, they brought in a bunch of influencers like I was the ocean or uh, scuba diving niche destinations. Uh, like Mark Weens was on the trip. He he's a cooking uh, niche. He went to India and th I don't know where he went. I can't remember. But they just brought a bunch of influencers to make our own itinerary around the world because they were selling round the world tickets where it's one ticket. You have to start in one country, go all the way around the world, and end in the same country, no matter how many stops you have. So that's what they did. They gave us you know they let us book our own trip so that's how this really big trip started for me I was in Guatemala at the time and I had to fly to the States I was gonna start in the States because of easy flights so uh, let me tell you how long this trip is because it kind of gives you some context why I started slowing down afterwards um, I flew to from Antigua Guatemala to Montana because that's where my parents live and I hadn't been there in years just to visit and pick up some more gear from other sponsors and stuff that couldn't ship to internationally um, so Guatemala to Montana for a few days Montana to California where the trip campaign officially started and then from Montana I flew to Hawaii did a week there just uh, diving Hawaii to Japan now, there, I didn't dive in Japan, and I didn't dive in all the locations, but I was connecting such remote places that I had a lot of layovers. So what I would do is I would extend those layovers for at least like four days, just because I had never been to Japan. And so that's how I went to Japan. Spent a week like hanging out in those big tuna markets and eating sushi and everything. After that, I flew to Korea. Same reason, just an excuse. It's right, right there, and I'd never been to South Korea. Uh, and then after that I flew to Philippines and I think this was the second time I'd been to Philippines did some diving up north and stuff like that after that I had another layover in Singapore it was pretty fun I stayed at the most expensive hotel in the country it was like ten thousand dollars a night uh, I think I had two or three nights and then uh, in that presidential suite it was it was awesome and then I flew to Maldives you can see why I had a layover in Singapore because there's not many flights straight from Philippines to Maldives. Maldives was awesome. Went diving all week, you know. But all these trips were like really not a vacation. I was, you know, get off the plane, go straight to the hotel, go diving. Four or five, seven, ten days, whatever it was in each location. Dive, 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 dive. Last day, take a day off. Right, right. I had to write about every location, make videos, photos. And then it was on to the next plane. I was living out of my backpack. I'll, I was basically used to living out of a backpack in hotel for the last however many years anyway. But 
you get the point. This was not like a luxurious vacation. It was a lot of work. After Maldives, I flew to Istanbul, stayed there for a few days, seen some friends. It's like my 20th time in Istanbul. You know, stayed next to Hagia Sophia, Grand Bazaar, did all that stuff. And then I flew to Malta, my next dive destination. Dove in Malta for like a week, 10 days. Um, really cold water, but it was awesome. After Malta, I went to Ireland and I was supposed to dive up north, north of Ireland, not Northern Ireland, but north of Ireland by Donegal or something like that. And they wanted to prove to me that it has the most shipwrecks in the world, but the, you know, Irish style, the weather got really bad and I didn't get to dive. Ended up just staying in the Sheraton in Dublin for a week, which was nice. Just drinking Guinness, did some Guinness factory tours and stuff like that. So I got to rest and catch up on the writing from the rest of the trip. After that, I flew to Toronto and the same thing happened. Uh, Toronto Tourism Board was supposed to fly me from Toronto to the coast somewhere on a float plane and do a shark dive somewhere on the Atlantic and because of weather again it got cancelled so I stayed in Toronto pretty much doing nothing and I booked the wrong Marriott so I actually ended up staying in Guelph I don't even know how to pronounce it G-U-E-L-P-H so I didn't even stay in the nicer Marriott. Uh, after that, I flew to uh, Aruba, which was like, by the way, I, I wouldn't recommend Aruba unless you're just super luxury, like don't want to do anything, don't want to leave the hotel. This, I wish I would have went to like Curacao or Cuba or something, but I did some nice diving around Aruba and that was pretty much my last stop. So. As you can see, all these locations at like average of a week each, just constant back to back to back traveling all the way around the world to Aruba. And then my last stop was New York, just because I had to end in the same country. And I had, I was so tired by this, you know, I wasn't just like checking out hotels, I was diving three dives a day just because I had to get enough uh, photos or footage or whatever for that location. And so it was a lot of work. Uh, I think like 15 weeks or something around the world and then I land so basically I went around the world landed in New York I had 18 hours off and I flew the Indonesia tourism board flew me the next day all the way back to Indonesia so I went around the world stopped went all the way halfway around the world again in the same trip and then I was working with the Indonesia Tourism Board. We did like six weeks around Indonesia. It was the same thing, just dive, 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 next location, next location, next location. Uh, you know, flights, dive, flights, dive. Uh, it was crazy. I mean, fun, but so much work. Uh, we went Bali, Komodo, Rajampat, Sulawesi, Maumir, Alor, probably some other places. And then I had two days off in Bali at the end of that five week or six week trip, whatever it was. And then I flew to Borneo and I had 10 days diving on the, in Sipadan, the, uh, they had like an oil rig converted into a dive center. It was the coolest dive center in the planet. And uh, yeah, um, it's called Sea Ventures. So I got to dive for a week in Sipalai, or no, <laughs> Sipadan, Mabul and Kopalai there in Borneo. Then I had, I, they flew me on a little tiny plane back to Kota Kinabalu and then a flight to Manila. And Manila, I was talking at a travel blogger conference and then I got to meet, you know, a bunch of other travel riders that I already knew or already, already met, worked with, whatever. And th that's how I ended this huge, like, huge trip. And this wasn't my huge, first huge trip like that. I'd had many years of those, but at the end of that trip, uh, I was just so tired when I arrived in Manila. I left my nice hotel that they were paying for and just went to like the outskirts of Manila and just hid out for like two, three weeks. Just hiding, nobody could find me. I stopped, I canceled all my trips after that. I had like three more trips like that planned. Um, I just canceled everything and, and slept for like two weeks. And uh, so now if I go back in time a little bit, 
my first or second time in Philippines, um, I went on another trip like this where I went all over Europe, Middle East, Europe, uh, Philippines. And that's where I met my now wife, Judea, in Cebu. And so we dated like for a few days, or went on some dates, I should say, with some group, group dates with friends. Um, but then I was traveling around the Philippines with my friends and uh, diving. And so, but we kept, that was about a year before and we kept in touch. And that, now that I was back in Philippines, I was like, why am I, why am I hanging out, hiding out in Manila in this loud, hot city when I could just go back down to the islands and hang out with uh, this girl that I liked, you know. So, and it's much nicer down in the islands. So I flew down there, she was in nursing school in Cebu and we started hanging out again and then we started really dating and I told her, my life, I'm so tired. <laughs> I just want to relax, not do any work, just hang out here for a month. And that month turned into three years. So um, just everything happened all at once. Like uh, somebody offered me money for my business. My, my, I had a travel blog, you know, huge traffic. That's, that, that's what my job was, the travel writing. I sold it. They offered me the money, so I sold it. It was just perfect timing. I felt like uh, I, I didn't enjoy I, I enjoyed the travel part. I always wanted to make that a job, turn my passions into a career. But I wanted to make videos instead of travel. That's why I, that's how I felt the world was going. More people wa want to watch videos about traveling or diving than reading about it. So, and then somebody offered me money, and I was like, that's good timing. So I basically retired for a year. Uh, we moved in together after a while, and then after three years together, we got engaged. We moved to Thailand for a year. We traveled all over Asia, and then we came back here to uh, Sikihor, another island here in the Philippines, and got married. And then uh, we, we wanted another dive destination, because like I said, I was starting to make videos, my YouTube channel. Um, and uh, so we came to Dowin. I'd been here a time or two with some other companies, resorts, they flew me here and I knew it was really good and I really don't like C Cebu or big cities. Uh, so we came here just to check it out. We started diving, worked with another company and the pandemic happened. We got locked down. So we couldn't even leave the house. We had like a red pass where they let her out twice, two days a week to go get food and back. Um, and that was it. So I had a new YouTube channel about diving, but I couldn't dive. Uh, so as soon as the lockdown ended, uh, we got a new apartment right next to the beach where we could dive even if there's a lockdown. And we just went full tilt on the underwater videography and marine biology. Started making friends from the marine biology department at the school here. and. Um, yeah, it just went from there. It's really nice having a home base. I mean, I own a car now. <laughs> if you if you guys knew me, traveling, traveling, living out of my backpack and three pairs of pants and three shirts and hotels and room service and laundry service every day for since 2010. It's pretty crazy to think that I'm married, I have a car, and I have two cats <laughs> and a home base. So it's pretty crazy but we you know what brought me here to the Philippines in the first place was the insane marine biodiversity um, there's so many spe you know this is the coral triangle and Philippines is the center of the coral triangle it just has the most insane stuff if you're into marine biology underwater you know the ocean blue planet you know the series Philippines is amazing for that. So that's why we came here and that's why we're staying here for now. We also love Indonesia and a lot of other places and who knows what the future holds. Um, right now I'm focused on uh, not just diving, you know, I'm, I'm making a book as well, uh, but I'm, all, I'm focused on getting in shape now. So we're trying to decide where to go next year, but it has to be somewhere where I can eat healthy, work out and all that, maybe even find a gym and a trainer still, but also have good diving for that side of my life. So it's good, I guess in a way we're digital nomads, we can 
work wherever we are. My wife also works online, so um, we can basically work anywhere in the world as long as there's Wi-Fi. And for me, somewhere to dive and film amazing new species every day. So I hope that's not too much, too long of a story. Believe me, there's a, a million little stories in the last 12 years or whatever it's been since I started traveling by myself around the world, 89 countries um, since 2010. But that's for another time, I guess. If you guys watched this entire thing to the very end, you're crazy. Put, let me know by putting a little uh, airplane emoji in the comments down below. Now you know a little bit of something about me. I'll see you on the next one. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. I think of you and all the sh you don't do. Well, I'ma make hella sure that I don't become.